Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Ironwatch RX8001. This watch is available from Ironwatch official store on AliExpress for €257. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch comes in a watch box, which is protected by this black cobbled outer sleeve. This is the watch box itself, as you can see, finished to high standard. And the interior is also finished to high standard, fully lined with a vinyl plastic, and the watch sits on a padded pillow cushion in the base, as one would expect. So I like the presentation of the watch box, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. With regards to the other items, this is the plastic guarantee card, which comes to the watch. And I'm pleased to report that the watch is covered by a two-year international guarantee, which is very reassuring. Often at this price point within the low tier at €257, Euro, watches are only covered by a 12-month international guarantee, so it's very good that Iron Watch official store on AliExpress are covering the watches with a two-year guarantee. One also gets this owner's instruction manual. It's bilingual, both in English and Mandarin. Clear, concise diagrams and also clear instructions. It details every aspect of operating the RX8001, including the movement use, which is the Seiko NH35A automatic. This is the plastic tag that comes to the watch. And lastly, one also gets this high quality screwdriver because it has screw pins in the rivet bracelet. So it's nice to get a good quality jeweler's screwdriver, as you can see, for resizing the bracelet. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Ironwatch RX8001. The watch is clearly an homage to the Rolex Submariner 6204 from 1953. It was the first Rolex Submariner. So, very similar proportions to the Rolex 6204. It has a 39mm case diameter. It has a 47.1mm lug-to-lug measurement, a thickness of 12.9mm and a lug width of 20mm. The rivet link bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the two button push clasp. And as you can see, the two button push clasp is signed to high standard with the Iron Watch emblem. Good firm resistance to the two button push triggers and I'm pleased to see four micro adjustment holes in the two button push clasp. I'm often critical of brands only having three micro adjustment holes so to see four holes is very good because it makes, makes fine tuning the length of the bracelet very easy. The interior is solid milled 316L grade stainless steel, brass satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks and finished to a very high standard. Nice positive click to the two button push clasp so it's very well executed, no sharp edges, the corners are well deburred and I like the large chamfer which is machined to the edge of it as you can see. So nice heavy gauge of metal to it and beautiful luster to the two button push clasp. Iron Watch deserve full credit for a very well made two button push clasp. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a top hat box crystal, as you can see, and it has blue tinted AR coating on the underside. And the blue tinted anti-reflective coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the gilt uh, pencil hands. So as this piece is an homage to the Rolex 6204 from 1953, it has very similar pencil hands. It predated the use of Mercedes hands on the Submariner, and an interesting detail is if you look at the sweeping second hand, the loom pip on the second hand is at the end of it rather than halfway down it or on the other end as per Seiko pieces. So this is actually very good because the original Rolex 6204 had the exact same design of pencil hands, including the second hand had a loom pip at the end of it. So iWatch have done a very good job. Now, often Chinese brands make the mistake of undersizing the hands in terms of their proportions and also the length. It's a common problem with Chinese watches, the hands are too short. But iWatch have got this correct because if you look at the minute hand, it extends all the way out to the chapter ring, which is indexed with 60 minute ticks. And that is exactly how a minute hand should be. The minute hand pointer, the tip of it, should reach all the way to the chapter ring. And if you look at the loom pip on the end of the second hand, that also reaches right to the edge of the circumference of the dial. So it also reaches the minute ticks on the chapter ring. And they deserve credit for getting the proportions right. If you look at the hour hand, it also hits the rectangular index at 9 o'clock. And that is, again, how it should be. So the hands are proportioned correctly for pencil hands. They're the correct length. And they're finished to a very high standard in gilts, so they're mirror polished and then uh, electro plated, as you can see, to give them this gilt finish. So very nicely done. 
The dial layout follows the classic Sabarana 6204 dial layout. It predates the use of the maxi dial. So the indices are printed. It, it predates the use of applied white gold indices. And I like the fact they've got the design absolutely correct because they've matched the patina loom tone on the printed dial indices and also the pencil hands. The color match is perfect. It also perfectly matches the loom pip on the ceramic bezel inserts inside the triangle. So it's very nice. So the loom is C3 Superluminova, which is a patina tone. Nice lemon tone to the patina loom, and I think it really complements the gilt's chapter ring and also the gilt's hands. So with regards to the bezel, it's a solid 316L grade stainless steel bezel, gear tooth profile to it rather than coin edge finished. Nice large gear tooth profile to it. Very aesthetically pleasing, very grippy, and also it's inlaid with the ceramic bezel inserts, which is engraved with Arabic numerals and minute ticks. And they've inlaid the engraving to the ceramic bezel to a very high standard with gilt paint. And we have the loom pip in the triangle at 12 o'clock. So let's test the bezel action. 120 click unidirectional bezel, as one would expect. Nice tight bezel action, feels very similar to a Steinhardt Ocean 139. No lateral side to side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever. This is a very well executed bezel. It's got a nice tight action to it. It's not sloppy. There's no play side to side or there's no back play. So let's check the alignment. I like the loud audible clicks. It's a very satisfying bezel to use both in terms of its feeling and also the sound of it. Perfect alignment. The loom pip and triangle at 12 o'clock on the bezel insert align perfectly with the triangle 12 o'clock index on the dial. So Ironwatch deserve full credit because they have got a very well executed firm bezel action, very satisfying to use, and the gear cut profile to the teeth means it's also very grippy and tactile. With regards to the crown, it's coin edge finished, and it's also very similar to the 6204's big crown, so they've got the proportions of the crown correct for 39mm head of the piece. It's signed with the Ironwatch emblem to a high standard, mirror polished as you can see, and the finishing to the coin edge teeth on the screw down crown are very good. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters of water resistance. Absolutely silky smooth to unscrew, it's very well made. Nice smooth interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So in the first position, it's the manual wind position and one can manually wind the Seiko NH35A automatic to top it up to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up, so it's an absolute pleasure to manually wind it. Now, one minor criticism is, as this is the NH35 rather than the NH38, it does have a date complication. The date wheel is present underneath the dial, but we have an absent date complication. There's no date window, so one can't see it. So in the first click position, it's the date setting position, and it's a phantom date setting position. One can feel the clicks of the date wheel clicking over with a quick set complication. So pulling it out to the second click position is the time setting position. Personally, I would like to see Ironwatch change over from using the NH35A to the NH38 because that doesn't have a date complication. And that would mean that the winding stem only would have one click rather than two. There would be no phantom date setting position. But however, this is subjective for a lot of collectors. They don't find the phantom date setting position to be a negative. It's something they can live with. So. Pulling it out to the final click position is the time setting position and if you look at the second hand it stops dead. One can hack the movement to set the time precisely to the second. So absolutely silky smooth, characteristic light resistance to the gearing in the NH35A. It's one of my favourite movements, it's a reliable well proven workhorse movement. Absolute pleasure to set the time. Pushing it back in has got a nice positive click and that restarts the second hand as you can see. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup, this is outstanding screw down crown execution. Silky smooth, the threading is really high grade. So I'm absolutely delighted with it. So as I've detailed, it provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. I like the fact it's low profile because in the absence of crown guards, having a low profile crown means it doesn't dig into the back of the hand when one flexes the wrist. So this is a very well proportioned crown and it also does look very similar to the big crown used on the Rolex 6204, which this is an homage to. So they've got the proportions of the crown with the case very well. So with regards to the case back, it's a solid stainless steel case back made from 316L grade stainless steel. One can see the finishing of the lathe tool cutting, as you can see, beautiful concentric finishing to it. 
It's very low profile, as you can see. No sharp edges. It's been chamfered and deburred very well. Coin edge finishing to the teeth. And it's sterile. And it's also very comfortable against the wrist when one, when, when, when one is wearing the piece for 8 to 12 hours per day. So I'll give you wrist shots and you can see how it fits my 8-inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet and I'm pleased to report it perfectly fits my 8-inch wrist with all the links in the rivet bracelet. The proportions of the bracelet in terms of the taper are absolutely perfection personified. 20 millimeters at the lugs and it tapers down to the two button push clasp. It's just the perfect balance, the perfect proportions to the 39 millimeter head of the piece. I also really like the use of female pivoted end links rather than male end links, because as you can see, the female pivoted end links allow for extra articulation. They pull the end of the, oyster, the rivet link bracelet down to the wrist very snugly. So the case has a lovely curved profile to the undercut. And then we've also got the female pivoted end links, which are, allow for articulation. So the fit of the case is very snug to the wrist and the fit of the bracelet is also very close. And they've made the correct decision putting female pivoted end links rather than male end links, which would extend the overall lug to lug measurement of the bracelet. Very comfortable piece to wear, incredibly well balanced, 138 grams. This is one of the most comfortable watches I have ever had on wrist and I've reviewed over 200 watches on my channel. It feels weightless, it feels perfectly balanced and this is a very good aspect of the piece because it's incredibly comfortable to wear for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day because the rivet link bracelet feels perfectly balanced with the head of the piece. The 39mm head of the piece and the 20mm rivet link bracelet really do balance very well. So good looking, uh, two button push clasp, beautiful luster to it, beautiful luster to the rivet link bracelet. The quality of the finishing of the bracelet is incredible. Absolutely gorgeous to look at. The boxed top hat crystal as you can see and the blue tinted AR coating does an excellent job as you can see. So the ceramic bezel insert really is the perfect balance between being a vintage aesthetic piece but with modern day specification enhancements and for example the sapphire crystal is more scratch resistant than plexiglass or alternatively acrylic which would have been used on vintage pieces. The ceramic bezel insert is also more hard and scratch resistant than aluminium. So it's a good looking piece and I absolutely love the look of the gilt pencil hands and the lovely lemon coloured patina loom of the C3 Superluminova. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The gilt chapter ring perfectly complements the gilt pencil hands. So good looking piece. The comfort level is good. Feel good factor level is good. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs uh, when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Now I've got high expectations of this because it uses C3 Superluminova, which is a personal favourite of mine, and I really like the green tone of it, but also I'm expecting high performance. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is outstanding quality C3 Superluminova. It's clear that Ironwatch haven't cut any corners with regards to the quality of the C3 Superluminova they're using. The loom pip on the ceramic bezel insert is glowing very brightly, as is the printed indices on the dial. If you look, the orientation is excellent, perfect symmetry because we don't have a date complication. And we've got five to six layers on the dial and also five to six layers on the pencil hands. Now, it's just very well done. If you look closely at the second hand, you can see the loom pip on the end of the second hand sweeping around the chapter ring. So this really is an example of excellent quality C3 Superluminova. I absolutely love the green tone of it. The colour match between the loom pip on the ceramic bezel insert, the printed dial indices and also the baton hands is very good. The same green tone throughout. And I think they've made the correct decision by not using BGW9 Superluminova, which would have a blue tone, because that wouldn't really fit the vintage aesthetic of this being an homage to the Rolex 6204 Submariner from 1953. So it's continuing to glow for a good length of time and it's glowing brightly. Uh, I really like it. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. You'll all be familiar with the Seiko NH35A Automatic. It's a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement. It has 24 joules. It runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. It has hand winding and hacking, which is used for complications. 40-hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable. And the stated accuracy of the NH35A is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. 
So a rather wide accuracy range. However, I'm pleased to report that Ironwatch are well regulating the NH35A movements they're using. This one is running consistently at plus three seconds per day, which is incredible accuracy for a watch that costs 257 euro. Plus three seconds per day from an NH35A is very good regulation. So Ironwatch deserve full credit for choosing the NH35A, but also for regulating them to a very high standard after casing. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch for my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So this is €257. Euro. Yes, it is unquestionably excellent quality and yes, it is unquestionably excellent value. In order to evaluate this piece, I always look for the three key elements. A watch should have excellent bezel action, excellent crown execution and excellent quality loom. This piece satisfies all those three key elements as I've demonstrated because we have no lateral side side play, no back play, perfect alignment with the bezel. The screw down crown execution is silky smooth. The C3 Superluminova is also outstanding performance. So those three key elements are satisfied. The specification is absolutely loaded because we've got blue tinted AR coating on the underside of the, of the top hat crystal, 200 metres of water resistance. They've made correct decision after correct decision with this piece. We've got female pivoted end links rather than male end links which give a better fit. The two button push clasp has four micro adjustment holes rather than three so that's correct. So really to evaluate this piece one has to look at the quality of the finishing. The brush satin finishing to the tops of the case, the brush satin finishing to the flanks of the case are perfection personified. Even the finishing to the gear tooth profile bezel is also done to perfection. No flaws whatsoever, no sharp edges, no burrs, no extra play or articulation in the links. It's a good tight bracelet. The female pivoted end links are a good tight fit to the case. This is just one of the best watches I have reviewed on my channel. For €257, Euro, this cannot be beaten. If you're looking for a Rolex 6204 Submariner Homage, this is it personified. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money, and I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Iron Watch RX8001. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.